set the stage, let me uh, lay out a few facts. So when we talk about the gender pay gap or the gender wage gap, um, people often cite in Canada 74 cents on the dollar. But that number really hides a lot of different um, factors. Um, you know, first, women participate at different rates than men in the workforce. Second, women are clustered in the 20 lowest paying professions, um, uh, it, such as healthcare aid and social assistance. In fact, this is especially true when we look at race. Both the highest number of over 100,000 and the highest concentration, almost 80% of racialized and Aboriginal women are in what's called health care and social assistance. So we need to acknowledge the intersectional uh, dynamics, uh, not just gender, female, and male, but also all of the intersections. People's lives have, people have many facets of identities, and, and marginalization and exclusion may exist because of how these identities actually interact. So regard, but, and I should say this, regardless of the method of calculation, the gender wage gap increases for women who experience intersectional uh, discrimination, be it ability, a racialized minority, a new Canadian sexual orientation, and other. But even if we were control for all of those differences um, and look just job to job, you know, are women paid the same as men? Because a lot of people say, well, you have to look at all those different aspects, and once you get rid of them, there's no difference. Well, in fact, the difference is still six or seven cents on the dollar, something that the economists call uh, unexplained. They can't explain the six or seven cents. I'm like, well, I'm a sociologist. I can explain it. <laughs> it's called bias in the system. It's embedded, embedded somewhere in the system. Some people might even say discrimination. Um, but this is the six or seven cents that even if we control for all of those other kinds of differences that we've been talking about, and even if this gap, some people say, oh, six or seven cents, so that's not too bad, it's basically gone away. Well, no, think about that accumulating over every day, every year. Uh, you know, it's going to affect women's ability to uh, support their families and also to retire, which is particularly compounded by the fact that women live longer. So six or seven cents, even that is going to make a difference. And, and then we have to take into account all the other differences that we talked about. We should also mention that the wage gap is lower for unionized employees because unions play an important moderating effect against systemic biases um, that exist. The other feature to note is that progress towards closing the gap has slowed in Canada and everywhere. In fact, if we look at even a country like Denmark, which we hold up as you know, having lots of good policies around gender uh, uh, equality, parental leave, child care, and all of that, the gap is stuck kind of stubbornly at about 80 cents on the dollar, or I should say on the kroner. Um, and much of this is due, when you look at the analysis, to women switching to lower powered careers upon the introduction of the first child into the home. And you know, so what we are stuck with is a situation where, even in a country like Denmark, women are still expected to pick up the brunt of childcare responsibilities or the flexibility required when you have um, children at home. Or said differently, I would say men are not expected or maybe even disparaged for making those choices. So this is not just about women. This is also about the roles that, you know, how we have also bucketed men into certain roles in our society as well. And that's why we want to think about gender here and not just women.